What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. The set I will show you today was created to celebrate the 90th anniversary of LEGO and you can clearly see that it's a big celebration as the set is absolutely massive. This is the 10305 Lion Knight's Castle. Yes, it is Lion Knight's Castle and not Lion King's Castle as the early rumors suggested. I didn't realize it first but as my wife pointed out, if you say Lion King, people might think about something completely different. The set 6080 was mentioned as a reference, but that was simply called King's Castle and it had Lion Knights in it. I did not have that set, as you could see in my comparison video last year, I had the smaller version, the 6075, and I compared it to the Creator Expert 3 in 1 set. But this one seems to be at a completely different level, the box is enormous, and you can see that the end result will be massive as well. Here's my usual comparison for the size of the box, with our good old Leap Hair for scale. I love the classic color scheme and the nice simple background at the front, most labels were taken directly from the classic boxes, even the age indication is a text instead of the usual 18 plus label. On the back of the box you can see how the interior will look like once built, a few details and mechanisms, but I think we really should take a look ourselves. I love how the box has extra information about the different factions in multiple languages, a nice attention to detail. The set has 4,540 pieces, it will be released on the 8th of August, but VIP Early Access starts on the 3rd. You can find links to the product pages in my blog post. The price is 400 euros or dollars. There are 35 numbered bags inside the two boxes with 26 building phases and an unnumbered one with mostly plates. The manual is in a paper bag which is nice, but it's quite big and heavy, seems to be at the upper limit of the paper bag's capacity. Oh, so we get not one but two manuals. They seem to be almost identical, apart from the numbering. Thankfully we get some extra information at the beginning this time, we get a little history lesson of the LEGO castle sets, beginning with the first 375 castle from 1978, then the 6080 King's castle, but interestingly, according to the designers, that wasn't the main inspiration for this build, it was the 6086 Black Knight's castle from 1992, with its raised base plate and dungeons. Then we get a few words from the design team and a little explanation how they recreated the original Lion Knights logo. I added the part list to my blog post as it is pretty long, you can find it by clicking on the link in the top right corner or in the description. Now let's start building. The first bag feels like a warm up exercise, we build a food stand, barrel, a cart, a cow, the first minifig and a small haystack. The cart is made of flag pieces that align nicely if they are folded up but might get misaligned during playing. We start building the base with back 2, and here's a cool novelty in the manual I've never seen before. We get some hints about the interesting building techniques used, you will find them in the manual, which means you don't need to watch my building reviews for them anymore. But well, wait, that's not cool. Ok, just kidding. Every extra information is more than welcome in the instructions. This wall construction technique is pretty neat, the triangular plates complement each other and the hinges hold everything in place while the assembly sits on some tiles. Yet another new piece highlighted here, a modified 1x1 brick. They are used as the legs of the table, looks pretty neat. This room turned out to be a well equipped kitchen with a cook. There are tons of details to look at, pretzels on the wall, a huge furnace with lots of different tools, a nice well in the staircase and lots of food around the table. We have a bowman built for the next room, the bow is on the wall, a mysterious map on the table, a target there, although the room is rather small for such practice. Time to connect the two sections with the toe balls, again two different geometries fitting perfectly, especially after adding the hinge element and all the different plates, amazing. The building technique for these portholes is nice, with those tiles placed sideways. The top follows the weird geometry, and then comes the battlement, these rounded L-shaped pieces were originally developed for the frame of the dot sets, but appeared in other 2022 sets already, this is their first time in grey though. There's a secret door here, and then here's a new room with a nice fireplace and a piano, which seems to be pretty out of place and time for the first sight. But if we check the manual, this actually is supposed to be a hapsichord, which, according to Wikipedia, was invented in the late middle ages, so this castle already had the latest cutting edge instruments of the era. Some clever part usage to be able to attach this decorative piece sideways, and you can see from the other side how nice this entrance is with the different ornaments. We got two minifigs, a lady and her first knight in full armor, who's also a lady apparently. Yes, there were female warriors in the middle ages, but as far as I know they were not granted the title of knight, so I'm not sure we can call her a lion knight, but anyway, I don't think we should spend too much time with this altogether. Another soldier in the next bag, and we have a very cool water mill with lots of details again all around. 
There's even a nest with a tiny egg in that small room, and the functional water wheel runs the millstones through those Technic gears. Here's a nicely decorated dining room with a huge table and fancy chairs, ready for the feast. The table has some cool details, just like the windows. But there's even more for the outside, some foliage growing on the walls, but we have window boxes as well, this castle is really dressed up. We get two kids in the next stage, the prince and the forest girl and a nice microfig. There's a new wall section in Tudor style, and there are some clever snot assemblies being used here. We built a small toy castle, a nice tribute to the yellow 375 castle. We got some roof tiles attached here sideways, and the wooden door as the final touch. This is our next minifig from stage 11. We built his room, the walls use the same snot technique I showed you earlier, it has a bed and a table with a letter and a pen. But the coolest feature of this stage is this amazing wall mechanism, this little room with the golden frog is hidden when the structure is fully opened and only reveals itself when it is half closed. It uses hinges and the curved vault top perfectly slides under this arc piece, how cool is that? Going forward we covered the fireplace from the outside with this long piece, I saw it last time in my son's city garage set like 10 years ago. We also cover fully the secret room, it's even more difficult to notice it. This is a pretty versatile piece, has been used as snow, ice, rock and plenty of other things in the past 5 years. It's not even new in medium nougat, but it's the first time it's been used as a thatched roof on bigger surfaces. It was a bit challenging to assemble, but the end result looks stunning. We got an archer and a lamb in the next package. This one is a new part for 2022, but it already appeared in the barn and farm animals set. Sorry folks, not even the 90th anniversary set will bring the goat back. We get a ladder here and a nice window structure again in the other tower with a cool extra feature, the bell. The top of the tower gets in place with the flags, we have more of them placed all around the build. We have some small pine trees in dark green, this is actually a new color for them. And this is how our build looks like at the end of the first manual. Here is the foundation of the next build, we have frogs and barrels and some funky angles achieved again with hinges and toe balls. In the next phase the dungeon below the castle takes shape. We have one here that seems to be a hideout for the forestman, the other bigger cave have some scary bats hanging from the walls. In phase 16 we get a wizard minifigure, it is Magisto himself. According to the manual he is returning after 28 years, we could see him in the set 1906 Magisto's tower the last time, he was in 4 other sets the previous year. There's a chest full of gold and amber and other treasures as well, and a brown fog outside. Why brown? I will show you later. This very cool snot block will form the stairs carved in stone, but the whole assembly is built in sideways. A little glitch in the multiverse, we got two magic wands from Harry Potter to be placed in that barrel, and unexpected support for our medieval wizard. We get these two figures in the next phase, and the home of the skeleton is built as well, there are two prison cells. This site has a cool tobal connection for the triangular connection, but I definitely suggest to choose the cell on the other side in case you are caught here, that one has a secret sliding door mechanism behind the trunk of the tree. There's an unexpected problem with the paneling, unlike the box of the Galaxy Explorer that arrived damaged, this one had no issues so this specific piece got damaged elsewhere. It sort of fits, but it's surprising to see that quality control did not catch this one. In the next phase we added the Technic gear, but the purpose is yet unknown, as it is not connected to anything. We also have two mysterious columns here made of Technic beams, and the black tree is also growing nicely outside. According to the manual, to tell the truth I had to use Google Translate here, this is a stable for the horse, an unusual location I have to say. Here is our next character, and I have to confess that this phase of the build was less exciting. There's a nice stand for the weapons, lots of walls were built and the tree was growing as well. Now this is an interesting section, the drawbridge. It's quite tricky to put it in place, had a few attempts until I figured it out. We need to close the front of the dungeon and secure the drawbridge, once it is ready you can see the tricky mechanism that can easily swallow unwanted visitors. Here are two neat building techniques, the first one uses this element placed upside down, it sits in this piece, basically the stud on top of it holds it in place and then this modified brick holds it from the other side. The other one is this nice knot assembly for the hanging flags, looks nice from the other side when it is in place. We've built this leather like thing with teeth on one side, it goes into this slot and can be moved by the knob on the side. The purpose of that lonely gear is now also visible, it helps stabilizing our black leather. But what will be the purpose? Have no idea at the moment. This floor will have plenty of weapons, it seems to be the armory. We have a nice window here with an interesting structure, and the armory has even more stuff in it, but the big feature is the finished mechanism of the drawbridge. It can be controlled with a knob on the side, and it works pretty quickly and reliably. 
We get our first horse in the next bag. This design and color is not new, but the boarding has a new print and the piece itself was not used for like 10 years I think. Here is the queen herself, I know there will be complaints, why don't we have a lion king besides her? As I said, I think it's the name itself in the first place, and otherwise LEGO had multiple sets from the Lion Knights line that did not have the king figure, despite having it in the set's name, like the 6080 King's Castle for example. Here remains a sort of mystery. The lady of the castle is very nice and detailed, there's a unique cape, a new face guard in pearl gold, but the hairpiece and the tiara is not new. This is the portcullis and it's a bit tricky to put it in place. Once the mechanism is installed we need to add this piece, as you see the bionicle tooth will act as a guidance and the axle stops the motion. Here's a character from the next bag with a flag and a pretty funny expression. The impressive huge tree next to the castle is finished now, it even has a beehive hanging here. There's also a nice decoration added all around the top, it's made of 42 one by one tiles. I figured out the mystery of this contraption, we can open and close the rear entrance this way. The mechanism of the portcullis is also completed, there's a ratchet that keeps it in position and we can close it super quickly. A final piece with another flag before moving to the last phase. Right on time, here's the glorious return of the Black Falcons. We get three awesome minifigs, this guy has to carry a lot of stuff and there's a very cool horse barding here, I don't think the Black Falcons ever had this. Here's a brick built ramp, as our castle is elevated we need this to reach the gate. This one also uses clips to attach to the castle. Yet another stand for the weapons and it's time to join the two assemblies and this is it. Our massive castle is finished. Just look at this thing, it is huge. It really looks amazing from all sides. As you see the 6086 Black Knight's castle's lifted base plate was a clear inspiration for this build but unlike that one, this can be opened as well. You could see most of the interior details during the building but once everything came together it looks like a medieval dollhouse. Going back to the sheer size of the build and the amount of minifigs included, here's a quick comparison with the Creator 3 in 1 medieval castle set. That one is dwarfed by the new castle and we get a literal army of minifigures this time. Here you can take a look at all the different minifigures we get, they offer tons of playability. But what I like the most are the functional details and we get a lot of them. The drawbridge with the counterweight mechanism and the hidden trap leading to the dungeons works perfectly, just like the portcullis. The secret forestman hideout has a cool door mechanism, a nice nod to the 6066 camouflaged outpost that also had a black tree and a secret base. Remember the wall hiding that secret room with the frog? As you see it's actually even more magical, the structure is a balcony when it is folded and once unfolded it turns into a bridge, amazing! The functional mill is still cool and the design of the shields in the dining room come directly from the classic yellow castle. Every room and area in the castle by the way has proper access, either through stairs or ladders, even this hidden room in the dungeon has a secret door. I kept my favorite little room for the end, I'm sure you can figure out the purpose by looking at the accessories, we had something similar already in the creator set. But now it is even better, there's an actual opening under the window where it is supposed to be and what can we find below? Yes, our brown frog is here. From this point I don't want to decide whether it is really an unlucky frog or it represents something completely different. So how to sum it up? This is a massive set with an astounding amount of details on the inside and outside as well, lots of very clever building solutions, tons of functional elements to play with, hidden features and easter eggs all around, the designers did an amazing job I think. This is a fantastic way to celebrate LEGO's 90th anniversary and the long long history of LEGO castle sets. There's only one problem, the price. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think all this is not enough for 400 euros or dollars. That's a lot of money, but if you compare it to other LEGO sets at this price range, I don't think it would have less details or playability to offer. But I'm sure besides this, fans would love to see a commemorative set that is more affordable and easier to manage. The Galaxy Explorer here costs only a quarter of this set, yet it's an amazing homage to the LEGO classic space era. The 40567 Forestman's Hideout is similar to what I'm looking for, but since that is only a gift with purchase set, you cannot go to any store and simply buy it. It would be great to see that one being offered as a regular set as well. Anyway, this is a beautiful and playable set, if you were impatiently waiting for the return of the castle theme, you have the budget and the space for it, then it is highly recommended.
Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.